Hello. Okay, so um, today is going to be a bit different. This session um, it's not going to be really me coding. What I want to do is I want to introduce um, a new project I've been working on uh, for the last few weeks and do a little bit of a show and tell uh, because I wanted to uh, record a session um, doing a few things after um, the let's say the most difficult part was done um, but for different reasons I couldn't do it so uh, the project keeps moving forward and uh, and I'm not recording sessions so <laughs> I thought well let's do a show and tell um, explain a little bit what is this project about and um, and uh, maybe it can be interesting uh, okay so this project is um, is for the MSX um, I, I mean I'm still working on the on the specky game that I've been uh, recording sessions uh, until now um, but this is a completely different idea um, so why I'm doing another MSX game well I released a Nanite recently and I'm putting together some libraries and some documentation um, uh, to make available you know as open source so people can um, make games in C like I did with um, Night Night um, but the problem with uh, well one of the problems you know besides having to write a lot of documentation and being quite boring is that um, the code I have currently is not is general but it's not general enough it's basically very specific for night night and um, it may not be as useful as I was expecting initially when I thought that I could release um, that code so I thought oh, okay so let's make uh, an example game so I can test the libraries and clean up a little bit uh, remove some of the stuff that is very specific to uh, Night Night and um, and probably fix some bugs that you know it doesn't happen in Night Night but if you try to use the library in a different way then you might find some issues um, um, but then yeah maybe this is not probably not a good example for the library um, although it's still useful because I'm still um, testing things and um, I have fixed already a few issues that never happen in Night Night because uh, the way the game that game uh, works. Uh, for example, um, I have a, a spray manager that is in charge of doing all the flickering. Um, you know, because of some limitation of the MSX, uh, that you can't really draw more than uh, four sprites. Um, in the same line, uh, you need to make them flicker if there is more more than four. So that flicker code is part of a spray manager that it was basically built for. I mean, I made that for Night Night, um, and this game now there are some conditions that didn't exist in Night Night and it was not working properly. So I just fixed that. So. This is still useful to release those libraries, uh, but it's not a good example. It's not a good game. Exem it's, a, it's not a good um, example game. And the main reason for it is that it's because it's a little bit too complicated. Um, and why is it too complicated? Because, well, before I was starting with, uh, with Night Night, uh, I was working on a different game, and during Christmas I was doing some experiments, and um, basically I was playing with some ideas uh, to see if I could make some sort of scrolling on the MSX. So I'm talking about the MSX one or classic MSX, uh, that it doesn't have a hardware support for scroll. And because the way it works with the BDP that you need to load uh, data so the BDP can draw things on the screen, um, so you don't have uh, direct, direct access to the uh, video memory, um, it's not ideal uh, to do scroll, 
uh, uh, by software anyway. So um, anyway, I was experimenting with some ideas. I tried some some stuff. It didn't work. Um, and I forgot about that. And then, you know, when I finished Night Night, um, I kind of wanted to try something different. Um, I think uh, uh, Santi Antonion had released uh, 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 2D Racer for the MSX that won the um, MSX uh, development contest of this year or last year. And he wrote a nice article um, about so the different techniques he was using to do the scrolling on that game. And um, the basic idea uh, he was using is kind of one of the things I wanted to try. So I thought, well, let's try that and let's make a scrolling game uh, on the MSX. Um, so what I'm doing is, uh, is a vertical shooter. Um, and yeah, I mean, basically, most of the, in, you know, the, the most interesting part of the game is just the technical side, which is basically scrolling. I mean, I'm still going to make a shooter that is fun to play, but uh, it's not nothing near really uh, from the point of view of the gameplay. So, so it's basically the scrolling routine. I think um, and it's quite complicated so it's not going to be a good example game example to use the libraries because to start with <laughs> for a few things it's not using the libraries um, because uh, the libraries is more like a general use case and this case has to be very specific to some things I need to do so in this session today I'm going to introduce a project and I'm going to uh, do a little bit show and tell what I've been doing uh, today I added the first uh, uh, enemy that is not on the ground, which is a ship, uh, you know, spinning, uh, it's a spinning uh, disc and I wanted to make that as a session but I couldn't uh, record so I thought, well, I, I would make the game anyway <laughs> and then I can explain it later, uh, which is not exactly the same but it's okay I think. Um, Right, so let's do a little bit of show and tell. So first of all, let's take a look at what I'm doing with the scroll, how the scroll works. So basically, uh, let's see, because this is the first time I do this with MSX. Yay, it works, excellent. Right, so this is tile, right? So we know this already. Um, so we have map with tiles and then so I'm so entities and and this is the actual map of the stage which doesn't have a lot now because it's just the beginning um so uh basic the basic idea with this is that um uh right so the way, I mean, it's going to be complicated if I had to explain everything about the MSX, but uh, long story short, basically, uh, in the MSX, you have the tile data and the color data, and then you have uh, a background map, background map, which is basically an index into that uh, tile set that you have in the, in the BDP memory. Um, and the BDP basically what it does is that it draws, you know, it will check this coordinate here, which is four tiles, eight per eight, and it will get, you know, this tile has index whatever. Uh, actually, index is one uh, in this in tile, in, tile, in tile, so it will get that tile and just draw it. Um, so. Um, if you need to change the tile map every time for the whole screen, for the complete screen, that is going to be quite a lot because that is, uh, that would be 32, uh, 24, that's 768 bytes that you need to bloat every frame, just a little bit too much 
Well, it's too much if you also have to uh, get, you know, you need to shift, you know, do the scroll you save up yourself uh, with uh, software because you need to get this tile, you need to shift the tile, the number of pixels you're scrolling, then upload that to the um, tile set table and then update the background. You're not going to have time. I mean, it's, that's too much. I mean, you can do it. Um, some of the uh, ports of the games uh, in the 80s for the MSX, they did this and that's why they are a little bit too slow uh, to be a good game. Um, so the strategy here is that uh, instead of doing all the shifting and, and, and the scrolling of the tiles uh, in real time, well, well, what I'm doing is just uh, by shifting those tiles. So I have for every single tile, uh, um, for every single tile, what I do is I check what is the tile just before that and basically I store a number of versions that are already pre-shift. So uh, as you can see here in this corner in tile, let's get a little of zoom, something like this. So this is quite limited. This is So this is the actual tile set here that I'm using, which is quite limited. But it's because this tile set in this map layout, so for example, this tube here, um, I only using it when the previous and the and the next one are black, so nothing. And this is a uh, specific black because I use this tile uh, to detect if there is no background, so I can draw some stars and have some parallax scrolling. Yeah, because uh, we don't have we don't have time to do things, but we want to do as much as we can, so it looks nice. So, so it has to be used only this way. If I put another one here, that is going to generate way more tiles when I shift them, right? So only these tile sets, and in this map layout, this is specific my layout. Um, this is already using 128 tiles. Um, I can potentially use more, but I want to stick to 128 because that kind of matches with my idea. I mean, I also have to keep uh, some tiles for for the font. I'm using the text and the score and the hood and all the stuff, and I want to reserve all the tiles for other things. So. For now, I think 128 is kind of okay. I mean, I can add a little bit more, but maybe up to 192. But it's not, it's not going to add that much. It's not going to be that different because one single tile requires four versions of it, and, and depending on the location, it can be more than that. So you're going to add little variation to the map for in exchange of way more tiles. So I'm going to say with 120 for now. Right. So so this is the basic idea of the map layout. And we will talk about the, the entities later. Now uh, all the magic here is basically how we oh, how we encode tools how we encode the map and this is what had most of the work which is not I mean looking at it I mean all okay it's Python it's powerful it's 266 263 263 lines of code and you know it's quite space and so it's not a lot but basically what this thing does is well, it performs an uh, it performs uh, analysis of the map. So basically, it goes through the map. Um, then what it does, it finds uh, a pair of tiles, which is one tile and the tile just before that one. And then basically, 
it keeps a uh, it keeps a uh, record of the tiles is finding. So if we get a new tile, a new pair of tiles that we didn't know about, it basically extracts the tile from from these this tile set. This tile set here we have, right? It extracts that 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 image information and then but basically it depends that to that so basically i'm building a new tile set and for each of those tiles then what we do is that we uh we shift them so the code we have here is extract the tail generate the step tiles which is basically doing the shifting and then we merge that back. Let me see what is that code. So we start the tile. See, we're keeping an uh, output tile set. So we extend that output tile set with, you know, we generate a number of tiles. Actually, this is quite complicated at the end because I can change the step. So at the moment, I'm going to scroll two pixels. Um, but if I want to do one pixel instead of 128, I will have right double so double yes I will have double uh, the number of tiles so I think this other question is going to I mean I'd rather have a little bit of variation in the in the map instead of having super scroll super smooth scroll because two pixels is going to be good enough we'll see I mean it's kind of I mean it's still two pixels but it looks good enough I think right so yeah basically expands that then all this stuff is just to detect if it's a transparent tile so we encode that in a special way so we know where we need to put the stars yeah we're more transparent yeah it's a little bit hard here then with this we're going to generate a new image uh and let's try to look at the image it's going to look so so because First of all, for whatever reason, GIMP doesn't seem to play nice with OBS, so it's not capturing correctly. But I think it would be enough to see. So this is the tile set. This is the tile set I draw, right? And now what we're going to see is I'm going to open the generated tile set. <laughs> but it's going to look really ugly because it's not really generated to look at it i mean we don't we don't really care about this right so this is our the tiles that we need to actually draw that stage right so we ne we don't really need to look at this so this is just generated by by the script and the data is packed and it's prepared to be used by the by the program so so by the game so the only thing the only thing we need to uh let me see if i can hide this so the only thing that is really important to us is this what we draw in tile right and uh, when we generate the stage what is important is this value here all right 124 oh i say 128 so it's 124 but then i have extra ties for the stars and the stars don't scroll but they change color so it's four ties per star so that's why i'm using 128 right so so with that i think yeah, with that we have already, you know, we pre-shift things. So then we have the scroll and the scroll is already written in assembler and it's not a lot really, um, which is a shame is that I have a version in C that it was a little bit slower, but that could have been very nice to explain how it works. But well, okay, so the basic idea with this is that um, I don't I don't update I don't okay so 
So to start with uh, this game, um, well, this is part of the this is part of the of the library that I'm going to to release eventually when it's ready. Um, so so basically, the library installs an an internal service routine, uh, an internal handler. Uh, that's going to be triggered every time there is a vertical sync, which is uh, 60 frames per second in NTSC and 15 PAL. So you can provide a divider. So you can do 30 and 25. And this is going to be used with um, something I, I always use in my games. That is basically I set a speed limit so the game works smooth uh yeah because depending on what you're doing in some frames you're going to do more things and in other frames you're going to do less things but you want the game to always play at the same speed so what i do is i can i think all right so i it's very unlikely that i i can go to 50 frames per second or 60 frames per second because I probably need to do way too many things to go go to that speed up to that speed but what i do instead if i say okay so what is the uh reasonable speed i can man I, you know i can sustain well if it's 20, 25 in pal and 30 in, in in ntsc it means that i can use two these things two frames to do everything i need so basically uh, you want to draw as fast as you can, but then all the logic of the game, you know, as long as you do draw in one frame or less, then you have another frame to do to update the, the game logic. So this is what I'm doing at the moment. So if we look at the game somehow, where here, right. So this is the game loop that is basically going up until you press escape or you press pause or there's game over, then it exits. Um, so basically, it does all the stuff it needs to do. It does entities, update the scroll, draws entities, does the scroll. This is a, this is a profiler for open uh, MSC, so we'll talk about that in a different session, probably. Maybe. The scroll, draw the scroll, and then wait. So, what it does is that, you know, if we are too slow then it won't wait it will continue but if we are faster than the 25 frames or 60 frames in the ntsc what it does is that it will wait so you know so the game always runs at the same speed so obviously we're going to waste some cycles sometimes but uh that's fine we just need to find the right speed for your game um, sometimes this is going to be three, for example, in some games. Um, in in the specy project, I'm using three, so it means that it's not 25 frames per second. It's going to be 16. Uh, but you know, for that game, it's fine. But in this case, we, I'm going to try to get to 25 and 30 um, if I can. And for now, it looks like it's it's going to be possible because of the hardware spice and everything. Right. So. So this means that um, so that I don't need to do everything. I don't need to do everything every frame. And besides, in this case, if I scroll at 20 frames per second or 30 frames per second, it means that I'm going to scroll one line of map. <laughs> so, you know, 30 times per second or 25 per second. So that's going to be very fast. So you still need to wait. So I, the scroll is going to be a, a little bit slower than that. So what it means that all the stuff I have to do is split in different steps. And I split the problem in those, in those steps. So I kind of uh, limit the CPU use usage. So I can do other things at the same time. I'm not sure if I'm explaining this properly, but that's basically what I do. What I'm doing. So, so the scroll has different steps. One of the steps is, you know, you need to prepare things in a buffer. 
so for the current tiles and then draw that on the screen and the next step what you do is you increment all the tiles on that uh, buffer so they move to the next tile that you have in your tile set that has two sprites scroll already and then you keep going that that way until you do that four times it means that you have a scroll that tile completely and you need to add a new line to that buffer then you reset the buffer because you scroll those tiles so you need to get back to the beginning with a new line which means that um, you have scrolled just one line right so, I mean, it sounds complicated, but it's not that much. I mean, this is, this looks a little bit too messy and I probably don't, it's not worth going through this because, I mean, if it was done all in one step, then that would probably be easy to understand. But I, I, I split that, uh, so currently, uh, what I'm the, the gaming area I'm using is 23 per 22, so that's 704 bytes. So, what I do here is that I do it in, in three steps, which is 2 of 234 plus 1 of 233. Is that, is that three steps? Yes, uh, so I'm splitting that, and because of that split, it kind of makes this slightly more complicated, especially if I want to be efficient in space and speed, and also has or you know the code to add the star field, so you have that parallax effect. So. Mm. See, that's another thing here. Um, this code here is basically, well, it's optimized, so you're, it's part of the same uh, vSync that we start with draw entities. So basically, this is not using the library. So that's one reason why this is not a good example uh, of, of that, to use that library, because I'm using hardware directly, um, because I need all the speed I can. Although, you know, for most cases, you know, 99 is using uh, in the library, it's just a thing wrapper uh, around the BIOS. And um, and I'd rather use the BIOS because it's, you know, more compatible, blah, blah, blah. Um, and, uh, and, you know, the BIOS is, is basically for that specific MSX model. Because remember, the MSX is just a standard, so you have a lot of different uh, manufacturers that they build their own MSX. So, um, you know, this works. It's very specific, and it's just specific for this kind of problem, but I'd rather use the BIOS if I can. Yeah, but in this case, the BIOS was too slow, so mm, I had to do things differently here. Um, so, yeah, so that's the scroll. Um, Another thing, another problem we got, we have with uh, with this is that um, so the map we're looking at the map we're looking at in um, tile is thirty two, which is the width per five hundred twelve lines, and that's sixteen k. <laughs> and you can see what is the problem, right? Sixteen k plus tile sets plus code, but that's a huge amount of memory. Um, you can, I mean, if you, even if it's for a cartridge, I mean, you can also, you can probably use a mega cartridge if you want, but uh, what I wanted to do with this is that I wanted to be very efficient in the way I store the map. So uh, you can compress that map. So you can compress this, um, but if you use a compression, for example, I usually use one of the uh, one compressor that is based on LZ88, I think it is. Um, like, for example, uh, LZ4 or UCL, or I think uh, there's another one from Speggy that is ZX7 or something like that. Anyway, 
those are really good compressors. Um, they, the code to uncompress, to expand uh, the data is minimal, it's very fast, it's great. Yeah, but you see, if you still need 16K of RAM to expand the map, it's a little bit too much, I think. Um, so what I thought I would do with this is, um, well, you know, you remember the way I was explaining the, how the scroll works is that after you increase every tile uh, four times, so the pre shift tiles look as you do, uh, you know, they do that two pixel scroll per step. Um, you need to add one line, right? Which is 32 bytes. So what I'm doing here is, um, is I'm implementing a run length encoding compression, uh, which is very simple. Look at this, it's very simple because it's very specific for this kind of data and it's very specific for the map I'm using. So basically this is encoding uh, uh, groups of two tiles. And I, it, it's using, uh, you know, because you can have more than 32 lines. Um, sorry, you can have, you can have more, you can't have more than 32 bytes because that's one line. And we're encoding based on two. At the end, it's only 16. So, you know, I can encode a few things in one byte, you know, and I can also use the, the most significant bit as a end of line marker so which with this what i what i do is that uh basically uh you can so this is the map size which is like 16k but it only uses 2.6k at the moment and that is only with the drawn length uh, encoding compression um, and the benefit of this is that I can uncompress one line at a time so uh, I mean it's a little bit slower obviously but this is the size that the map is going to use in ROM and it's not going to use RAM at all because oh well I mean it's going to use <laughs> 32 bytes which is the line I uncompress every time um, and this can also be compressed with uh, with UCL, which is the one I use here. So this will be even less memory. So I can uncompress this into I don't know. I run some tests with because this is the, this map is mostly blank at the moment, but with a map that is more more realistic. Uh, we're talking about about six K, so six kilobytes. That's great. I mean, I can have that in RAM. And after compressing with UCL, it's going to be about 2K anyway. So it means that uh, in a, I, have, I can have few levels in a 32K ROM, uh, which is brilliant. So this is basically the idea behind the map and the scroll. Um, yeah. And this is basically all, all, all the magic is just this script. It's just prepare the data in a way that you can use it then and, uh, and be fast. Now, another thing that, um, yeah, let's open again the, um, yeah, another thing that the, because that's the map. So that's the map data. And another thing we have here is the map script. So the map script is, because the map data is just for the scroll, it's just the background. And it's just to look nice, really, because you know it's, you don't really interact with the background. It's just the scene that is scrolling and, and, uh, and your spaceship is playing over that. But the map script is actually what is making things happen. Um, and let's go back to tile. 
so right so the map the map script is basically has the information about the entities so the script basically has let me see if I remember what I did <laughs> two days ago or no no it was one week ago maybe uh, so right so so the script what it does is actually encoding the script can be a little bit complicated to understand but um, the actual player of the script is is this it's very simple that's why I like it and actually has a lot of stuff because he has debug but all right so basically the script has is basically has a pointer then every time we add a line it moves that well it's not a pointer it's an index it moves that index and um, when we move that index we have another index or a pointer that is pointing to the what is the current point of the script and if it doesn't match we keep increasing the index and when it matches it has packed some information on how to spawn entities you know uh, 80 ground is one ground turret that is going to fire you and a disc is the spinning, um, spinning disc that is going to fly around in the in the in the scene um, so uh, well it does pretty much I mean that's what it does uh, it's just a script, it's just a list of events that are going to happen and because it's synchronized with the uh, it's synchronized uh, with the lines that we're going to generate in the map let me see uh, basically the script is going to have information about the line where we need to spawn these two ground entities and and the x coordinate because the y is going to be which line started from the bottom um and that's basically it i mean these disks here are going to be spawned they are look you know they're overlapping and they're together in line because we're going to you know they're going to uh, spawn like it was a wave of enemies and uh, according to the speed of the map they need to overlap a little bit so they have they're not too far away from each other right so that's the other part that really has some interest here um, so that's just, the other part of the game really um, then the rest is pretty much standard I mean if you look at this and you remember the other sessions about the specy game uh, let's see right uh, about the specy game this is pretty standard this is the same entity system I tend to do so I need function that set some stuff um, in this the MSX project, uh, okay, so for the sprite library, the sprite manager, I have some high level stuff that you probably don't need, but I think it's very useful. So, yeah, because with the sprites, you need to blow the sprite data to, um, to a table, and then when you change if stuff about the sprite you don't refer to that data you refer to the index on that table so that's what we call a pattern so the sprite library has a way of tracking those patterns so i allocate a pattern for the ground with a number of frames and i'll blow the data and basically i keep the the index of the pattern it's just a very nice and and convenient way of manager managing sprites uh, dynamically because um, I'm using 16 by 16 sprites so I think the limit is 64 sprites 64 patterns and I can have up to 32 sprites so I think 64 patterns um, what you can have um, so with this dynamic 
uh, manager basically i don't care just keep allocating obviously <laughs> there is some debug and if at some point i allocate more than i can it will you know flash the border or something to let me know when i'm testing uh, but basically uh you can allocate as you go and then you can the allocate and, and and it's great it's just very easy to use and you know the update is very similar it's the same structure and using the spec again uh, the entity system is very similar if not the same um, so what else uh, do we have here I mean it's that's pretty much it um, yeah for this is how I'm setting up the stage um, a little bit work in progress this has to be nicer but for now because I'm only testing with one stage then that's enough and um, yeah I have some few stuff already you can you can kill enemies they can kill you I have um, yes yeah, so this is exactly this is exactly 100% the same thing I'm using this big it's the same strategy so at the moment I have an entity for effects that is for explosions currently uh, bullets that can be player enemy bullets uh, they have ground enemies on the disc and that's it and um, we can actually we can actually see the game and see how this works in so at the moment the ROM is using 11k here uh, and we're using 4.5 case of RAM <laughs> which is looks like we're doing it currently okay so let's play first with impal um, let's see if this works yeah it works okay so this is pal um, when I'm testing I usually put uh, here see there's a 50 here telling me what is the refresh rate um, right so yeah I mean it's probably not the best way of looking at this because they can kill me but let's clean this stuff although yeah maybe I should disable all this stuff so we can look at it a little bit more comfortable yeah but basically yeah that's the effect basically so the stars change color they only get drawn if um, you know it's background that is not you know just black or what I call transparent actually because you can have actual black um, uh, what else uh, bu -bu -bu -bu. yeah and you can see the effect of the scroll of the tiles um, and see that's that that would be the speed I I think is probably okay for the game uh, because if, if it goes too fast um, yeah I think if you look at the at the at these entities which is the um, the turrets or you know the ground enemies they move synchronize with the with the scroll but they are not part of the scroll they are sprites actually i can make them see see the the sprite flicker i can make it blink if uh there are more than uh four sprites in line so they are sprites um synchronized with the background so i think looking at the way they 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 move with the scroll i think the scroll is i think it's fine if it's faster it's probably not and also if it was faster uh, I don't think I would have time to do everything I want to do <laughs> so it can go slower but not faster because this is PAL um, but if we go with uh, NTSC uh, we have less time so it means that see the scroll moves faster everything moves faster and um, I have less time to do things uh, I hope 
the video is capturing okay. I haven't tried this before, so this is the first time. Yeah, it looks like it's capturing things correctly. Just like a, yeah. I mean, considering the amount of entities I'm just managing at the moment. Okay, so there's no slowdown, so I mean, I can. I can try, for example, so this is the maximal amount of my firepower currently, and uh, yeah, I think it's fine. I mean, it's not moving a lot. I think it can have more stuff in, on the screen, and it will be fine. Right, so this is NTSC, and this is still moving okay, um, and I think this is probably enough i think for whoa okay so i just had uh, a little crash on my computer <laughs> so um yeah basically um summing up so yeah i i would like to see what is left uh technically speaking it's probably looking at how to do the big enemies, bosses, um, looking at different ideas, but still don't know how to do them. Um, so yeah, sorry about that. I'm still going to upload the video because I think uh, it's okay. It's just that there was that cut at the end. Um, so yeah, I hope uh, you enjoyed the video. This was a little bit different. It was more like uh, introducing the project and doing a show and tell. Um, let's see. Um, I might do more sessions with this game or go back to the Specky game. Um, okay, uh, see you next time. Bye.